I've only just started filming again and already I'm getting requests. And I love it, guys. Anything you want me to paint, leave a comment below. Could be an existing paint scheme or you just want me to paint something weird. Put the comment below and I'll add it to the list of requests. So today I'm painting an uh, AdMac uh, paint scheme with a pale cloak. This was the request and I went for white. And one of the reasons I'm going for white is because it's hard to paint white. And I just want to show you guys, if you're painting white, just use a spray can. Just spray the whole model white. It saves you so much time. It's not worth the effort paint, spray, spraying it black and then painting it white over that. So I'm first gonna work on some of the details of the mini because I'm gonna wash the whole model with Sweeking Grime later on. I picked Doomfire Magenta, which is a pretty reddish pinkish color for the cloth details. And now this, of course, you don't have to follow along with. You can pick your own color. You can go orange or blue or green or just go black and white. That's also cool. But you need something that contrasts well with the white and especially for vehicles and so on, you know. You want to have something else to paint the vehicle with than just white, or you just have big white blobs in your army. So the pants are gonna be this Doomfire Magenta. So and here's what that looks like. And as you can see, it's pretty sloppy. There's paint all over the armor bits and uh, yeah, I did the hand as well. I figured a little bit of color up here is fine and I got some on the gun. None of that matters. We're gonna do those bits in either black or metallic paints and they'll just cover over the Doomfire Magenta. It's good to learn which paints cover which so that you can work a little bit faster. But generally speaking, if you're working with contrast and you paint over it with non-contrast paint, you're gonna be fine. So here I got Black Templar contrast paint and I'm just gonna make the weapon and the backpack black. And I'm gonna also add this to the metallic parts that are lower on the body, just to you know, give it a little base coat of black and then I'll start working with metallics. Time for the metallics. And I'm gonna start with some Iron Warriors uh, paint. And I'm gonna start with dry brushing. I'm dry brushing the backpack and the gun, just to give it a little bit of a metal shine. It's not really intended to cover. It's supposed to still stay black. But just instead of looking like black plastic, it's gonna start looking like black metal. With the dry brushing done, I'm using the same Iron Warriors paint to go over all the armor bits that are on his pants and close to the cloak. And the reason I'm not dry brushing these is because I just don't want the metal on the cloak and I don't want it on the pants either. This way I can have a little bit more control, but still have the speed of the dry brushing on the parts that I can dry brush. The metallic bits are done and it's time to start shading the Doomfire Warlock, Doomfire Magenta uh, pants. And I'm shading them with Dragonov Nightshade. This is a blue shade, so the pants are gonna turn out a bit more pinkish, purplish than red that they were before. I really like doing this. I really like adding a different kind of shade, a different color of shade over the base layer because it gets yeah, I don't know, it gives more depth, it gives some really nice shading, and you get some really cool and funky effects. I could have shaded this with Carober Crimson or Druki Violet, which are both way more red, but then, you know, just wouldn't be the same effect. So with the wash dry, it's now time for some streaking grime, and I love me some streaking grime. So I'm gonna start with the cloak, and I'm going to start here at the bottom, and I'm gonna make this really grimy and dirty, then I'm kind of gonna feather it out towards the top with a bit of white spirits. And this will make the whole model look dirty and grimy. I'm going over everything, not just the cloak, but absolutely everything. And then I'm gonna reduce it again, which means I'm gonna take some of the white spirits and my brush, and I'm going to keep applying white spirits to the parts where I don't want the streaking grime, and it will kind of wash off. You can also use a cotton swab, that's usually what people do, but those are people who really try to make the best model possible. I'm just trying to get an army on the tabletop, so I'm going for a faster method, that's just brush. And as I said, I'm going all over the model with this. I'm adding streaking grime to the weapon, the cloak, the, the pants, everything. So that's the model covered in streaking grime and it's still wet and that's fine. You can already start reducing it. You could also wait until it's dry and give you much more control. You know much better where the streaking grime is and where you want to get it off. But like I said, I'm trying to work fast. Imagine you're painting 40 or 60 of these. You probably don't want to wait for it completely to dry. So first of all, we start with the head. I want the head to be a bit lighter than the rest just to make it pop a bit more. It'll draw the attention and that's really where you want people to look anyway. Then work your way down. Every time 
I'm removing my, my brush from the screen. I'm putting it in this little pot with some white spirits. And I'm coming back and I'm just sort of scraping it off, yeah, but without pressure, of course, because you don't want to scrape the paint off your model. And I'm just cleaning my brush occasionally on this piece of paper. And keep going. And slowly reduce the amount of streaking grime. And it's cool, you get this control over where the dirt is. And I'm working down because I want the bottom of the cloak to be much dirtier for two reasons. One is that it just makes more sense. You know, the cloak drags along the, the floor, the ground outside, it gets stuck on places, it gets dirty. But also, I'd like to have the top of the model a little bit lighter than the bottom of the model. It draws the attention of the viewer to the top of the model and it just makes for a much more interesting viewing experience, much more interesting miniature than if the top were dark and the bottom were light. So keep going here and I think I'm pretty much done here. You can see there's quite a lot of dirt here at the bottom, the top. It is dirty, you still see it, but it also clearly is a white cloak. And uh, that's the request, a white cloaked AdMac. Yeah, time to let this dry for a bit. So the streaking grime is dry and let's take a look at the model. Because if I'm being very honest, I would consider leaving it as it is if I'm painting 20, 40 or even 60 of these minis. You know, if you're going for a whole horde of Skitari, you want to have something simple for your battle line troops. And this, to be honest, isn't bad. It's okay. If you have a horde of these on the, on the table, they're gonna look really cool all together. Slap some basic material on there and you're done. But I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I wanna show you how I would use this scheme for a battle line like this and then build it up towards a character or a model that you just wanna spend more time on. So to that, we're gonna start a little bit with the helm and the face first, give it a bit more of expression. So let's grab a little bit of silver and just go over the whole face mask. And it's okay if you're working with this and you kind of lose all the shadow and the shade in the face, because we're just gonna wash this later on. I'm gonna take the whole thing, the face, the rebreather, and this is just to lighten the face. You wanna have light faces on your models because that's where the eye is drawn automatically. And if it's very dark and hard to see what's going on there, it kind of looks weird. So this here is now silver. I'm gonna pick out a few more details in silver because there's quite a few nice little details on the backpack and the gun as well that I wanna have standing out. So one of them here, let's do this little antenna he has and just streak a little bit of silver on there. Doesn't have to cover fully. It's not supposed to be looking brand new like this. Then let's see this thingy here. I don't know, some sort of gauge, some measuring tool. I guess it's something they touch often, so it's probably not as grimy as the other things. You know, it's things that get used usually don't tend to be so grimy. And especially stuff you're holding in your hand, you're rubbing or you know, surfaces that these guys walk on if you're building a vehicle, they can be a bit more shiny and nice and metal -y. I'm also going to do the base for some of the uh, parts of the backpack that I want to have lighting up later. I want to show lamps or displays. And using silver as a base is great for the technical paints that will come after, that will make it look kind of glossy and kind of you know, like a light bulb. This thing over here, that looks like a light bulb. Then here on the front, we got a little light bulb or I don't know, some sensor array. Who knows what these things are. And then to finish with the silver, I'm lightly dry brushing the gun. I just wanna dry brush the top of the gun, kind of make it look like there's a light glinting off it. It also makes the gun stand out more. It's another one of the focal points of these minis. Guns are important in 40K, so make them stand out. Make them sure that people can you know, see them from a mile away. One of the ways is doing that is by making them either completely different color than the rest of the mini, or by dry brushing like this. Finally, a little bit of dry brush on the backpack just to make the edges stand out a little bit more. Gives the color more, the, gives the mini more depth and more shade. Makes everything pop a little bit more. So we're continuing with some details and I'm gonna use hush shoot copper now to take to pick out some of these details here. And there's a good reason I'm using copper. See, copper is a bit reddish, of course. So that will go well with the purple pants. Now the pants on this side, copper over there, it's all in the red area, but that's not the only thing. You can 
distress the copper and you know, add verdigris, which is a green. And there's no green on the model yet, so it's a good way to add an extra color into your color palette. And it's a good color to go with the red because it really contrasts well. So pick out a few details, maybe something on the backpack, maybe something on the gun. We'll see what we'll do. Maybe this here on the top is actually like a cooler. Let's make this more coppery. Make it stand out from the rest. So I kept going quite a bit. As you can see, I got a little copper in the face, on the gun, on the pants, here on the back, copper, copper elements. I think that's mini painting. You just keep going until you think, yeah, that's enough. Now, little details on the backpack. I'm just gonna rush through this so that you, you know, don't have to watch me paint everything. First, spirit stone red on this little light bulb over here, and I'm gonna use it on the eyes as well to make them look glossy. And then waystone green here on the other dial that he has on his backpack. And using the silver as a base color there will make it look kind of shiny glass here. Now AdMac models come with a lot of hoses everywhere, so you need to figure out the way to paint them. Instead of just making them all black, I always like to uh, change things up a bit. So I got black here on the backpack. I got black here between his legs, but he has a couple going under his arm on both sides. And I'm just gonna go over the white, the base layer that I sprayed there with some Athonian camo shade, just to make them look kind of dirty, old, weathered. And if you've ever wondered why Athonian camo shade is called Athonian camo shade, check out my channel. I got loads of shorts now about where the names of these paints come from. Like, what is Athonia? Or actually, it's Athonos. And why are they good at making camo shade there? Time for a bit of weathering. And I've got Nihilac Oxide here and I've watered it down a lot, pretty much one to one. And I'm going over all the coppery bits on the model. And this is gonna take some time for, to see the proper results. It's gonna have to dry, but it will leave a nice verdigree tint all over while still letting the copper shine through. If you've thinned it down enough, if you're putting this on pure, it's just all gonna be bright green. Maybe the effect you're looking for, but definitely not what I'm looking for. So while the Nihilac Oxide is drying, I'm not really happy with the eyes. I think they're a bit too bright and a bit too cartoony. So I'm gonna use some non-oil to darken them and this will also bring a bit more shade back into the face. And I hope this is enough and otherwise I'm just gonna repaint the eyes and do them in a different way. So let's see how that works out when the eyes are dry. For now, I'm gonna start weathering some of the other metal parts. I'm gonna do that with some heavy uh, crusted rust deposits by AK Interactive. Um, this is an enamel paint, and if you've never watched my streaking grime video, it works the exact same. It's with white spirits, you thin it down instead of with water, and it's really great for really good weathering effects. You have to be careful with this one, the heavy crusted rust deposits, also the medium and the light one, they're super strong in color, they're extremely saturated. And this is gonna be really red, so I'm just very thin down with a lot of white spirit, I'm just dipping my brush down onto the gun here and there just to give it a little bit of rust. And it will seep into the, the recesses. That's what I want. I wanna have some, some rust sort of deep down into the nooks and crannies where they're not cleaning well enough. Some on his body armor, some on his legs, and the backpack as well. Now you can see how very bright and red the rust is and it's too bright for me. So I'm going over it again with uh, Rust Streaks from AK, which is kind of similar, but just more brown than red rust. And I'm stippling it on the same place. This is where I did the uh, heavy crusted rust deposits. Uh, it will cover part of it, but not all of it. And that way you get more interesting rust too. You get a couple of tones in there. You don't have to cover everything. And if you just like the red, keep the red. I thought I'd be done by now, but I just can't get over how ugly those eyes look. I mean, they're not at all nice red and glowy. It's just, I don't know, it looks crap. So I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna start with painting them black and maybe that's going to be enough. So if I paint them black, I could just make it look like a void is staring at you from behind this mask. And there's nothing else going on behind there. And I think that would be a cool look. That looks a lot better. Now it looks like there's a void staring back at you. 
uh, when you look into his face. I'm gonna do some basing with Sterling Mud. It's a technical paint or technical paste from a Games Workshop. And I'm using this one because it's dark brown and the dark brown will kind of go nicely with the streaking grime, but also with the rust tones. And it stays in that same sort of palette of browns, of dark reds that the rust has, that the streaking grime has, that the dry brushing metal on a dirty black metal has. And I like to use my bases to accentuate the mini. I don't want to have bright colored bases when my mini is dark colored because it will draw the attention. So instead, some sterling mud and then once this is finished, I'll wash it with streaking grime just to blend it in with the rest of the mini. And this is the result. Simple grim dark pale cloaked ad mac. This is how I would do it. And like I said halfway through the video, you can leave out the copper and leave out the rust and all the other weathering. And it will cut your painting time almost in half. And especially if your batch painting makes a big big difference. And the way I've painted, the order I did, you can follow that. So you can stop anytime you like and then come back to your minis at a later point and finish them up. So you can leave all the rust and all the weathering until a later point and then just do your whole army at once. Now this is the first painting video I made since I came back and I love doing it guys. I'm really getting into the mood of things again. So if you have any suggestions, leave a comment below. I'll add it to the list and I'll start painting. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.